Oh, hey everyone. How's everybody doing? Hope you're all having a lovely evening. Um, welcome. How's your Friday been? It's been a busy Friday night. It's been uh, busy in the world of Studio One. Um, <clears throat> we had a really good show over on the Home Studio Trainer channel. He had a, gr a great show and he did a, a giveaway tonight. Then there was the, the Studio One e-meetup for Pennsylvania. I popped in real quick. I wasn't there for long, uh, only because I had to get ready for tonight and hanging out with you guys um, and, and family calls. Kyle's hanging out. I'm just going to catch up with you guys and say what's going on. Michael's here. He's been here for a bit. Kyle's here. Hayden's here. Hang on. I, I saw Bill's here. I haven't seen Bill on a show in a while, but it's good to see you, Bill. And also, it was nice to meet you or like see your face. I know I didn't have my camera on because I had the kids run around. They were like, meh, whatever. Um, so let's, uh, let's catch up with some of these messages. Everybody's saying, hey, yeah, it's cool. Just had a great time with the PA Zoom. Yeah, you guys did awesome. <clears throat> that was uh, fun. Um, it's kind of early, but we'll let everybody else know as well. I'm making a New York City metro area one. I've talked to the guys over at PreSonus, and I'm going to be like kind of the host or the, the lead guy. So... More details are coming. I've been talking with them. I've been talking with everyone's favorite, Gregor. Um, so it's coming. It's a New York City metro, but you don't have to live in this area. You can join any of these. They're e-meetups. But I'd love anybody and everybody to come hang out. When, once that comes out, I'm going to be sharing it like crazy. It'll be all over the pre pages. You'll see it. I want you guys to come hang out. Hayden's here. Let's see. I'm catching up, listen to a friend, do a couple songs on his live stream, then jumped on the here. Well, thanks for jumping from your friends over to here. And Kyle, that means a lot. Hey, thanks for the feedback on the bass part. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see, I'm catching up. Let's see. Uh, sonar works. Uh, once I get the sonar working thing done, it should help. Yep, sonar works will help you, you know, hear your stuff in your room. Um, if I can help out, just let me know. Yeah. I bred bass for bluegrass. Nice, most definitely. Cool. Might take a few months. Uh, I missed you on there. Yeah, I was only on for maybe half an hour, maybe, and it was it was close. It was it was tight. I was like, uh, so was I. I I hopped in at like eight thirty uh, Eastern time. Uh, you're a high pitch fan or something? Yeah, yeah. You hear that one? Hang on, let me come over here while we're doing this. Make sure that like the mic stuff. Actually, I'll just pull this a little closer. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, oh, you know what? I think somebody was touching some stuff when they shouldn't have been. So I'm just going to drop my input down a little. Let me know if this is good. I, I adjusted it a bit. Um, and you're probably hearing a computer fan go because they do that. Sorry to make you, make you shake. Um, yeah. Uh, hey Tim, it was nice to meet you on the Presoners Live. Daniel, it was nice meeting you too. Um, uh, you know, I have to check uh, if I've made. I know I have done some stuff with the podcasts that, like, we were talking, you know, putting groups together and the Ripple edit and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I've done like a an editing workflow. I haven't, and this is why, because I'm going to do it for multi-track drum editing. That's coming. It's something I'm working on. Things are weird because COVID and being able to get together with friends who have drum kits. I have a drum kit, but I also have a family, and I can't really play that while they're around. So I'm still working the logistics of everything out, but I'm going to have a big series of stuff going on where it's like multi-track drums, how to record them, how to edit them, and then maybe we'll get into mixing them. Which, while we're talking about you guys tonight buffering, uh-oh, am I dropping frames? I don't think so. I hope not. Let me check. Checking some stuff. Everything on my end looks okay, and I have everything hardwired. Ooh. There's that. Um, CPU's running a little strong right now. Let me. I'm gonna do this, and just talk to you guys here, because that should help out a little bit. Also, I think this computer might need some updates, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> While we're just talking and hanging out, first we're going to do this. Oh, yes. Um, in case anybody's curious, lime this evening. Um, 
it's good now, good. Um, we have some things we can do tonight, and really we can kind of do both, but um, some of the thoughts I had for doing tonight was we, you know, frequently on these streams with you guys, um, we write songs, or I write stuff that's in my head and I need to get it out, but <clears throat> I wanted there to be um, a better flow for things, so I was thinking of creating some uh, some templates with you guys, some songwriting templates of a lot of stuff that I use and how you can make them, how you can do a lot of things within the templates and we can build it up and make all that happen. Or, um, put the lime and the coconut and mix it up. Yep. Or what we can do is I have multi-track drums that need some mixing for a drum cover. So we're going to highlight the drums a little. Uh, the only unfortunate thing with that is I can't play the guitars. Hey, new subscriber. Thanks, James. Um, I can't play the guitar tracks because it's a cover track. So I don't want to get like me the demonetized or flagged or anything, but we can mix the drums and then I can get them real close and kind of blend them into the guitars and all the other stuff later. Uh, so I kind of want to see what you guys think we should do. We can, we can do both. If there's one you want to see more than the other, but we're certainly able to do that, this screen needs to go to sleep. You, hang on, you, go to sleep. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm just checking some settings over here. Is this gonna mess stuff up? I probably, it might, you might get a little hiccup in the audio. Actually, then again, you probably didn't. I see it's still going over here. So, um, let's catch up with stuff. Yeah, you guys may hear the fan. This computer's running real crazy. I gotta do some updates on it. So, it might it might be breathing a little heavy tonight. And this is you guys, and I don't mean to keep shaking you like that. Uh, hey, Tim, it was nice to meet you. Uh, hey, I'm catching up. Do I have to talk with an accent? Uh, it's totally up to you. Hey, if you feel like you need to, yeah. Uh, it did glitch for a few seconds, but it came back up. Cool. Yeah, I, again, this computer's doing some weird stuff right now, and I don't know why. Ken's here. What's up, Ken? Uh, uh, is that a doctor? Is something I can talk to my, to relieve my bellyache? Uh, <laughs> cool with anything? Either sounds helpful. All right. Well, you know what? Let's do this, because it's kind of quick, and we can do it. Let's make some templates. What do you guys say? All right clicking some buttons here we go um so you open up your studio one like you do and we're just gonna make something blank i'm gonna go totally blank and uh, where it's um not that i really need to save the song but of course you should name it correctly and i do most of my work in 48 i was recently working on something in 16 bit as well but i usually do 32 oh i know i'm gonna get yelled at i know you guys are caster from a keyboard shortcuts because you guys like to see that and the mouse see I always forget I'm gonna move this again sorry you guys are hearing that there you go okay let's move that guy uh, mouse it's in here it's in here it's in there there's big mouse right cool 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 uh, increase contrast no I don't need any of that Okay, big mouse, keyboard shortcuts, template making. Um, hey, well, uh, while I'm just kind of talking to you guys, tell me it dropped. That is so weird. If something's being weird, um. I'm getting like little blinky error messages, so if you guys are seeing stuff, let me know. And you know what? Let's wake this guy back up and see how it looks over here. Why is that over there? Um, sorry guys, something's being weird. I should have rebooted the computer before. What was that? I just heard something happening. 
Okay, hang on. I swear, I think things are okay. <laughs> Quality check, guys. Quality check. This is nice and cool. This is nice and cool. This thing's running a little, a little heavy, although the CPU's down a little bit. Oh, quiet. Oh, everything looks okay. All right. Boop. All right, never mind. Sorry, I'm going crazy. Let's hide that. And you go back to sleep. Um, okay, template making. We're going to create an empty song. We're going to make some templates. You're looking okay right now, but there are periodic buffers on my end. Yeah, I had some kind of CPU drop, which was very weird. But things seem very stable now. So, I don't know. I'll blip every now and then. We'll make it through it. Um, okay, template mixing. Um, bring it back. Here we go. Um, I like to see things in bars. Uh, I saw Hayden go. Can I explain why I choose 48? Um, the reason why I choose 48 is I do a fair amount of audio to video work, like syncing, like mixing a live set, which is going to get sync, uh, you know, lined up later. Um, put into sync is the words I was looking for. Um, so in the video world, the like baseline um, sample rate is 48,000. So I just choose to use 48,000. Um, also, if I was going to go to something else, I would probably go up to 96. This way when it all gets dumbed down to 48, because 48 doubled is 96. There. I So because of the amount of work that I do with audio to video that choose 48 if i was doing strictly audio i would probably honestly i would still use 48 because having more information and then dumbing it down to something with less information later is not nearly as bad as trying to take something that doesn't have as much information and upscale it basically it's like it's, I think of it like photos. If you have a very low resolution photo and you try and make it real big, it's going to look real pixelated. But if you have a really good looking photo and you make it real big, <clears throat> it's got the information in there and you'll be able to see it more clearly and kind of, you know, vice versa. If I have a 4K image and I shrink it down to 1080, it's just taking all of those pixels and squishing them together. And I'm not really losing anything. It's just making them smaller. But the information is all there. So that's why I go with 48. Brief pauses in video. Yeah, something's going on tonight. Uh, this machine that you guys are, you need to get reboot. Can't do it right now because really interrupt the show. 4824 is industry standard for broadcast. Exactly. And that's kind of what I do. All the settings on that page get saved as part of your template. Yes, they will. And let's go back into it. Uh, okay, does that change anything on your computer if you use it for other stuff? No. No. There's a reason why there's like a minimum of 44.1, and you can go up from there. There's a little bit more um, CPU taxation if you have higher sample rate, sample rates. So if you see that your computer is struggling a little, then you can kind of downscale. But you, for like broadcast stuff, because it's generally 24.48, but if you want to have more information and better resolution, you would just double to 96, 192, 3. 20, etc, etc. 320, whatever the, whatever the next one is. Um, <clears throat> you're going to take into consideration that you can dither down from higher quality, but you can't dither up. Correct. It's like taking and making it big versus taking a big resolution photo and making it small. Big to small, you can do it. Small to big, ugh, it's not going to be great. Um, stick with 48. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so 48, 32 is generally what I do because of like headroom and processing. So uh, you can stick with 24, whatever works for you guys. I don't care about song length. I don't really care about tempo, but why not? Just like this would be the first thing I would change going into this new template. We're going to create an empty song. So <clears throat> for me, creating this template, I have to think about what we've been working on and the kinds of things that we do and the kind of instruments that I generally work with. So the first few things that I think of is I'm going to need some kind of drum. Now, I'm going to use one now, but I'll show you how you can use a template to kind of 
you know, make new templates with different things. Cause maybe I don't always want to use, like, let's go with the Cornef audio coded 19s. Maybe on another one, I want to use the, the back to school, um, drum kit because it has a different sound. It's uh, sampled from a different drum kit. Maybe on another template, I want to use Steven Slade drums five. And of course this is going to beach ball on me now because we're talking about it. And why wouldn't all of my computers just struggle tonight? You know, if this one's going to do it, why not you? You can beach ball. Do your thing. Nobody else is doing anything. Just consoles open. I chose the wrong one to start with. It's okay. Who cares? We're having fun, right? Steven, uh, if I've looped a part, hang on, while this thing is beach balling, I'll leave him there. Uh, let's see, if, of course. Let's go. Steven J. If I've looped a part and repeated it a bunch, how do I make a change that affects all the parts in Studio One? Are you talking about like if you've made duplicates out? Like if you have like a, a drum pattern and you just literally change the pattern and you want them all to change, you would create a um, what is known as a uh, duplicate shared. And that's uh oh, I think somebody might be awake and that's not great. Under the edit menu. You can do duplicate shared, which uh, apparently uh, my default is shift and D. So that would make a duplicate shared. And then any time you make a change to the original, all the other ones would follow suit. They would have that exact same change. If you wanted to have them separated, just kind of duplicate and modify the ones you need to. Um, then it won't. But anything that's duplicated will uh, get the same change. You know, every one's a duplicate duplicate shared would get that same exact change so hope that helps um see that a little more detail what's your goal yeah yeah so i figured that that's kind of what you were going for um okay so let's see oh yeah um so another thing actually thinking of it when we're making a template i'm going to open up my mixer and every time i need to do stuff for you guys whether it be for streams like we're doing tonight or any of the videos I work with, I always make a mix bus. And that's gonna be separate from my main bus. My main bus is literally like, I don't put anything on here. I make a mix bus inside my session. Um, so it, it's this is part of my workflow. Uh, I didn't make anything. You're just gonna be called mix. Hayden, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so I always make a mix bus and I always make sure that everybody goes to this mix bus. So um, on my mix bus, it always goes to sub one because that's the send to you guys. And then I also need to do the outputs because this is something I always do. And I'm just gonna put it to minus 10 because that's my general arbitrary output to you guys volume. Um, we're not really, I mean, right now we're not really doing anything <clears throat> Uh, that you guys need to listen to. We're just kind of doing templates and stuff, but that's my send to you guys. This is you. See, that's you. There you are. Um, okay. Another thing I like to do, and that I do almost all the time, get out of here. Instruments, this guy. Expand. Uh, oh, goodness. Okay, if I remember correctly, this thing does 12 channels. And then I can go in, do a kick, caps locks, that's what I want. Kick, tabbed over, snare, tab, uh, toms, uh, overhead, room, para, oops, parallel. Oh, I probably spelled that wrong. Whatever. Uh, but. See what happened? I, because I activated these after the fact, they're not going to the mix bus, they're going out to the main bus. So I just gotta grab all these, select them, mix, bink. There you go. And then another thing, select them all, change the colors. Uh, you guys probably already know that 
I like my drums in light blue. So all of this stuff is going to carry over in those templates. It's going to get my colors, it's going to get my routing, it's going to get any kind of plugins or VSTs that are going on. So that's a lot of the stuff that we're building up today. Do the same. I create a mastering bus that I put all of my mastering tools or effects on. Yeah, this is essentially the same thing. I do some mix bus compression or some mix bus EQ or anything else that needs to happen across the entire mix on this mix bus. And then if I'm doing like in the session mastering, I can put that on my main out. So I always make a mix bus. This way I'm not having like a hundred different plugins on my main out. I can put like two or three and I can do the same thing on my mix bus and I can do the same thing on my drum bus and I can do the same thing on the kick bus if I have live drums that have like a kick in and kick out and a sample and all that other stuff. Ah, bubbly. Um... You can kick me out if you want. Yeah, Hayden, you're done. <laughs> Basic, but can you explain the main purpose of the bus? I think I already did that without kind of doing that. Um, it's taking all of your the tracks that you need to go to it um, and just giving you one fewer thing. So like, here's all of my drums. And actually, let me go into here. And this is this is this shows you, actually, I think Gregor recently put a video out or is about to, eh, it doesn't matter. Um, tracks versus channels. This is my MIDI or instrument track. And there's only gonna be one and it's gonna hold all of the information for my drum VST. Uh, there it is. Come on, catch up. Okay, sorry about the click if you guys got that. Okay, everything's working. Oh, but I didn't do the routing here. So here's another thing. Go into the drums. I got to go into the mixer. And I just want to change these to different outputs. And all of this will save in the template. Mm -mm. Need to name it something other than sub one. It's. I mean, I don't need to. I really. This is really my only other output. On my Apollo Twin, it's, you know, I have two outs. I have the main outs or I have the secondary outs. So, I mean... Do you want me to name it you guys? Because I could. <laughs> Route multiple things for processing, like drum bus, bass bus, lead guitar bus, yes. And then you could do mix bus like we did before. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, does that mean you just... Uh, hang on. Does that just mean you route those buses to the main out bus? Yeah, you certainly could. Absolutely. Um, and then like I've done is everything goes to the mix bus. So that's another thing that's like your main fader or your, like your master fader outside of the main fader. Okay, so doesn't matter that you guys won't see this. Let's go back to drums. And then you'll see this is all routed. So if I hit my kicks, goes to the first channel and the overheads in the room in the parallel because it's supposed to. That's how drums react in a real room. But my direct is this first one, snare. Same thing, toms. And then the overheads. So, getting all that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> all right, so there is all of that. Now, I would like to... Um, I'd like to be able to hide all these in a folder, but folders are usually over here. So let's just go ahead and pack that into a folder. And we're going to make a bus channel. I'm going to call it drums. So now all my drums are easily collapsible in and out on my mixer. So that if I need to, so now I've created a drum bus, Hayden. And so all of my drums are going to go to this main bus if I wanted to do some overall drum compression. Instead of doing uh, six or eight, however many this is, different instances of that compressor, I can put one compressor on my drum bus that affects all of them. So all of these are going into the drum bus and one compressor is going to do the work, do the work if we need to. Uh, okay. So, uh, name it Spacely Sprockets. Oh, you with the Spacely Sprockets. Um, 
What if you didn't route them? Then they wouldn't go there. The, 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 everything goes to your main outputs uh, by by default. Um, I just wish multi out BSD drums would work with pack to folder uh, like audio tracks do. Nothing would be present for as far as artifacts. No, you wouldn't have any artifacts or anything like that. If you don't route through the bus, it would go to the main outs and not get the particular processing. Correct. Which can be kind of cool if you want it to um, do. <clears throat> like I, I recently did a mix for a Buddy, and um, I needed my kick drum to be real punchy. So I had my kick drum go to my mix bus, and then all of my other drums go to a drum bus, and then out to the mix bus. And then I was able to send a copy of my kick drum to the compressor on the drum bus, because they should all kind of react the same, and then also do some side chaining off of that kick as well. So it's cool. Murphy's Law? Seem to do it. I don't work with pack to folder like that. You don't think? You're saying Steven Slate wouldn't work with pack to folder like that. Now, mind you, Kyle, the, I only have the instrument track in here. But if you're saying it won't, I have Steven Slate. Let's throw this onto another track as well. And of course, my computer's probably going to think about this one a bit because Steven Slate's a bit bigger. Well, I guess actually it wouldn't be. The shell should be smaller because all of the libraries are offset, where with the other one, everything's dumped right into the one plugin. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, create. Let's just, honestly, uh, designer, user, uh, classic rock. Yeah, honestly, classic metal is probably more of what I need. Uh, deluxe rock. Sure, let's load that one up and then I'll talk to you guys. Yeah, that's going. Uh, now I just need to learn compressing. Yes, compression can be your friend, but it can also really be your enemy if you do if you overdo it. Uh, DJ Big Red finally caught one of your lives. Yeah, thanks for coming and hanging out. Met you a few weeks back during Johnny's HST live stream. Yeah, Big Red, I remember. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, so yeah, why would you do a bus but it never sent to the main output? Um, well in the like broadcast or live world you could create a bus that was um uh well in the broadcast world you could do what's called a mix minus it's um let's say you're uh, a tv news anchor and you're talking to somebody out in the field you want to be able to you want the person out in the field to be able to hear the news anchor and if they roll any clips or anything like you know any like b-roll or cutaway clips the person out in the field is going to want to hear that, <clears throat> but they may or may not want to hear it themselves. So the guy doing the mixing can send a mix minus. It's going to be the announcer, the host, plus the B-roll sent to the guy out in the field. And the guy out in the field, hey, Super Chat, thank you so much, uh, Music to Motion. That's Michael. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Excuse me. So the mix minus is just the host and the b-roll going to the guy out in the field but you the audience are getting the host the b-roll and the guy out in the field it his mix is minus himself but your mix is this so you can do that with buses that's something you could do in like the broadcast world if you're going to do like live concerts and stuff um very similar kind of thing you can do like okay well I don't have enough outputs on my board, so I can just do a drum bus send to the headphones or the click track or whatever, you know, the the in-ears or um, the stage monitors or something like that. If you don't have enough, you can just sum things down in buses and do it that way. Um, Kyle was saying that Steven Slade Drums doesn't do this very similar kind of thing like we just did with the Corneff Audio where you can dumb it down into a folder. Let's prove them wrong. Okay, so that wasn't going to you guys. Now it will be. You guys should be hearing all that. These are all important sounds. <laughs> okay, so Steven Slade drums, let's expand that out. And let's say, bleh. oh, I wish I could click and drag these. You know what, when we do uh, I know there's a bunch uh, a bunch more people here now. Um, so one, thanks for coming and hanging out. Two, 
Uh, earlier today was the Pennsylvania Studio One E meetup. It was a lot of fun. We uh, all talked a lot. Actually, a bunch of the guys who are here tonight were there. Um, I have been working with the people at PreSonus, and we are doing a New York City metro area one. But it's not just New York City. Wherever you are, come hang out. More details are going to follow. But when they do come out, I hope you sign up. Come hang out where we can talk and nerd out and be super cool and all learn from each other. Daniel, who's hanging out, or was hanging out earlier. Uh, oh, but I see Blades is here. Uh, Daniel, who was here, we were talking how to do ed uh, podcast editing and how to make a quicker workflow with groups and Ripple edits. So he learned something new tonight. Um, and I was able to share some of my workflow with him, and it seems like it's going to work. And that's what we're doing tonight as well. Uh, I need to go back into Steven Slate, mix, you, and then we just... See, this is the boring, tedious thing, is going in and saying, okay, all these things, different output. But when you make it into a template, which is what we're doing, um, you only have to do it once. You have to do it once, and then you're good to go. Eight, nine, ten. I don't even know what most of these things are. Also, this mixer is all kinds of weird. What is all this stuff? I picked the wrong thing to do. <laughs> 11 you know what? we're just gonna go up to 12 because that's what we did and this is for proof of concept so now all these things if we go back to create a bunch of them were that looks different that's that I don't know why that's not mix Oh, stereo too? So one, two, maybe I should have done monos. Makes sense too, because, eh, I'm overthinking things. All right, so let's do this. I hit that. Uh, Kyle was saying dump these into a folder. Um, first things first, why not just go here? And, well, all these need to go here. And then I'm gonna pack that into a folder. I'm gonna go, eh, as Steven's laid drums and we're gonna make a bus and there it is Kyle you can absolutely do it works exactly the same way so there's our proof of concept cool cool now that we've done all that let's get that out of there eh, that's not what I wanted oh my goodness get out of here delete I don't even know what you are you're a bus Remove. Remove. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so offline, not with you guys. I'm going to do I'm going to do this drum thing for probably most of these other ones. It's just the boring, tedious thing of going you go to this output, you go to that output. Again, once you do it, you only have to do it once. That's why you templates, especially if when you're doing like writing stuff, that's what we're making here is writing templates. You only have to do it once. Uh, I'd like to be wrong, Kyle. It's been proven you are wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm catching up. Uh, let's see. Haha, I like. It's like plastic never. Okay, hang on. Here we go. I'm catching everything up. There. Okay, big red. There we go. So okay. So uh, the bus never sent to the main output. Exactly. You know. Um, I don't run a sub base 808 through my bus and generally let it go through to the main. Yep, yeah, that's something you absolutely could do. Um, that's something similar to what I did on the track I was mixing recently. Um, I like a classic never. <laughs> uh, uh, cool, it makes sense. Uh, Blades was saying, hey, everybody, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, bud. Well, then sometimes you have a front of house mix and a back of house mix. Yep, that way the audience hears a particular mix, but the people on stage or doing the performance have different mixes. Yes, um, that's another way you can do like mix minuses or use buses or anything like that is different feeds. You have a, fi a feed going to your main mix. You have a, you know, if you're only one person doing the biggest show you can kind of think of is you can have one mix going to your main PA. You have do your monitor mixes for the band on stage whether it be monitors or in-ears then you can have your broadcast mix then you can have the the video guys mix like there you can do a bunch of different mixes and they're all they all want their own thing uh okay so now we're catching up because kyle's still wrong <laughs> definitely needs more cowbell oh clearly wow this is life-changing hayden i'm here to change lives and make things easier for everyone uh is that possible <laughs> i've proven it come on once I thought I was wrong, but I was mistaken. Mm. 
yeah, you know, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> no, this is great. I use Stephen Slate drums. I never knew how to do this. Oh, did you not know how to do the routing? That's how you do the routing in Stephen Slate drums. Uh, love my template. Saves so much time for setting up a basic session. It's ready for your typical stuff. That's exactly what we're doing is I'm tired. Like I've been having uh, a lot of ideas recently and I'm like, I need to get this out. And I've just been grabbing my phone and recording, but sometimes I'm in here and I'm like, I, I have five minutes. Let me grab a guitar, let me plug in and just get something in. And it, it would have, ideally, we're gonna put um, uh, amp sims on. So that's all gonna be in the template. Uh, typical stuff. Did a video on this kind of thing as well. Yep, I'm doing a stream on it. And I've done template videos before. Or I've done a template video, but yeah. Yeah, couldn't you wait until you have the MIDI track, then explode nose the tracks and have it that way, basically the same thing? Yes, but to make the template now, I don't have any information. And instead of writing some in and doing it later, if I can just pack it into a folder now and expand it out, because I don't need all of the MIDI information on a bunch of different tracks. I want my channels to hide. I can have all the MIDI on one thing. That doesn't matter. I don't need my MIDI, unless I was doing something where I needed to like export everything out, but then I would just take the minute that it would do, take the minute that it would take to do that and then bounce it out from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yes, I absolutely could. Uh, I spent 40 hours looking on YouTube to just figure out how to do that with <laughs> Slate Drums 5. Should just came to me first, man. <laughs> but then we have 12 copies of SSD, each playing one drum. Well, it's all the same. It's the one VST instrument. Um, it, it's the one VST instrument that's playing all of those sounds you have everything spread out it whether you have it as tracks or as channels and i just want different channels out now but um it's still just one vst it's not like i did that and you saw a bunch of different steven slate drum vsts um that's what would happen if you were like duplicating the channel to do all these things um, but we wouldn't want that either gotcha generally don't have issues running multiple vsts but forgot that some computers are not as powerful well we all can't be mr fancy pants all right, we've done our drums. Now let's actually start adding some tracks. Um, bass, got to have some bass. And I'm going to, because it's a template, I'm also going to overdo things because I'd rather do that. And I'm going to pack them into a folder and I'm going to make them blue because that's what I want. They're all going to be that. They're all going to go to my mix bus. I don't care about any presets because I don't have anything saved right now. I guess I sort of could but I don't know what I like uh, for bass. Maybe we'll find something real quick. So here we go, bass, audio tracks. I'm gonna get four of them. I'm gonna automatically pack them into a folder. The one unfortunate thing is that it's gonna make the four tracks in the folder, but it's not gonna make a bus for it. So that's something I need to change. They're all gonna be input one, which is the input that I generally use for my quarter inch input. That's the high Z input on my interface. They're gonna be mono, because yes, it's a bass guitar. That's what it is, cool. Ready? Yeah. So it did make our folder. Here's our channels. There they are there. So quick and easy. Just make a bus. There it is. Uh, let's see. That's that output. And now I can go into any one of these and very quickly be able to hit record on them. Um, so really what I could do is make this like, I can make this just DI. If I only want a DI, I can make this clean amp. I can make this um, grind amp, and I can make this uh, heavy distorted. And I can put different presets on all these. Like DI, immediately I think this is going to be clean. But for these guys, let's just, for bass, I, I, you saw I shift clicked, right? Everybody saw that? I hit shift, and I selected these guys, and I put them all onto Empire. And so now they all have an instance of the plugin on them. I hate that it opens it up like expanded. That's just not part of what I want. Uh-oh, Kyle took something back. Tisk, tisk, tisk. 
Uh, notice the tracks is kind of a pain. It can be, yeah. So it's much easier to have the MIDI on a single MIDI track and then have the audio channels separated. Yep, that, that's what we're doing. Uh, Mika's here. What's up, Mika? Uh, now that I think of it, Tim is correct. And this is a better method. Thanks, bud. <laughs> 14 watching, only 8 likes. Ah, oh, Michael Johnson. Yeah. Also, if you guys just want to, like, tweet or put it on Facebook, have some people come hang out. We're doing bass. Let's go ahead and open up a preset. This was gonna be like our clean ampish. So SVT, something like this. Honestly, as like a real basic starting point, this is fine. This is your generic rock bass sound. Um, I mean, honest, I guess. Ooh, uh oh, that's not doing what it should be. Okay. We can also very quickly Grab this bass, which is probably out of tune. My cables are wrapped around this little table. <laughs> oh. Let's just listen to this one real quick. Oh god. Oh, I'm hitting things. So, here's a problem. There we go. Now it's going to you guys. something real quick let's do this now it's a little less latent okay so there's our nice clean bass sounds and that's gonna save and we've just pulled open a preset for that now let's go to our grind grind is gonna be like kind of a medium kind of distortion bass sound for me um, so what's this That's grindy enough for me. Maybe I'll take the EQ off and push a little more tube screen drive. Get the level up. That's got a little bit of crunch to it. The volume's way up. We're in the bright channel one. Honestly, that's all cool. Nope. I'm cool with that. It's got a little crunch to it. I like it. So, save that. Don't care about the clipping right now because we're just messing around with stuff. And let's go balls to the wall as if I'm doing metal. <laughs> uh, uh, up the irons, let's see what this is. Honestly, this should be the other one. These guys should switch. Uh, that goes there. That goes there. Let's take this. Get rid of both of those. So it's a little more distorted on this guy. Cool. So there we go. Now any one of these, which, what am I looking at here? Clean amp, arm, hue. Nope. Yeah, you guys are probably getting some input pops, so I'm sorry for pops and clicks. But now I have three different bass sounds. I can have that in my template, and at any moment I can just plug my bass in and be like, okay, this song that I have in my head currently has this sound to it. Straight up clean. Amp sim, grindy, heavy distortion. All going to the bass bus, collapse it down. Here we go again. Let's do some, now we're gonna get into where production can get real crazy. Guitars, oops, guitars. Um, actually, we're just gonna name it guitar. I'm gonna make it green, cause that's my color. Ready for this? I'm gonna make 12 of them. Uh, it's probably gonna be a little too much. Input one, all of this is fine, all of that is fine. 12 of them in a folder. Immediately make a bus. This bus goes to the mix. Oh, uh, clicks and pops, I think is might also be this. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, that went to you guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. 
Uh, let's see. Let's catch up with you guys. Kyle's got to run. Bye, Kyle. Thanks. Mojadin, what up? Mika, see the EQ range switches above the EQ knobs on that Ampeg? They work. Yes, they absolutely do. That's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> and I just didn't mess with them here. Uh, Daniel is here. Going to try and set up meeting for Seattle. Sick. Let me know about that one. Uh, base night regards from Mexico. <laughs> Saca Las Jelas. Oh, thank you, Jim. Pablo, hey there. <laughs> oh, okay. As your sexual orientation has been an issue in the music business, sometimes it's difficult. Um, no, and you shouldn't let it? Um, because, I mean, if somebody's got a problem with it, like, don't let that change who you are. That thing is really all it comes down to. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's the best I can, I can tell you right now. Um, alright. Let's get back into templates. Actually, I want to hide this because I don't need to see that. Um, and I know you guys are generally looking on... Actually, I'm thinking this right now. Because I do want to, like, blow this up for you real quick. And display. Yeah, don't worry about that one. This one, optimized for... Oh, uh, no, never mind. I can't. Uh, I'll just zoom into things. So, whoosh. we're just going to make stereo guitars. I'm going to make all these guys get out of here. Stereo guitars all going to the main bus. And we can change all of this later. Like, again, none of this matters. <clears throat> Pablo, oh, Michael, thank you. You took care of that. Yeah, this is about music. It's about having fun making music. Oh, something I forgot. Bass bus, mono. I don't need that to be stereo. For the most part, I don't need it to be stereo. Um, I do a fair amount of, like, rock kind of guitar, so I can have lots of different options. First, I want to name my bus guitars, because it's all of my electric guitars. And for my workflow, guitars is electric guitars. And then I have other stuff for acoustics, which we'll get into. So I'm going to take these four, which are going to be similar. And then just for now, I'm going to give it Empire. Oh, it does the expandy thing. That must be a preference, perhaps. It might be. Um, so for the first one, actually, let's just hang on. I'm just going to grab this, I'm going to plug in, and we're going to get some real quick and ugly sounds, because why not? Uh, here. Honestly, number one, it's a little dark. Uh, I generally, generally do crunchier kinds of stuff, so let's do whatever this is. It's not bad. Um, too clean. Again, too clean for me. Uh, like that. We can work with that. I'm just going to copy that one over to this guy. So now if I wanted to. So there's my basic rhythms. Um, job done, right? Cool. Uh, actually, let's do the same thing for all of these guys in case I want to do like some higher up kind of thing. Uh, not both. It's because I have a temporary group going. <laughs> I don't care about tuning right now, because I don't care. Uh, I use a mix bus for overdubbing. Um, you actually, you, you very much could. I I have a, like a overall mix bus, um, but that's like kind of why I have just four basic guitars here. Um, because like I'll, I'll, maybe on like one and two will just be my general rhythms. And then three and four will be like octaves or anything like that. So these can all be 
um, and I'm just going to go ahead and change the color. They can be like lighter because they're not as heavy. Um, but something I definitely want to add in is something I just recently picked up, which is a Misha Mansour's um, plugin from JST and Toneforge. So this thing is real heavy. Oh, too many. <laughs> I don't even know this thing. This thing's terribly out of tune. It's like kind of annoying me. You guys don't really need to hear this. Um, and I'm not going to do it right now because... So maybe I want something a little less crazy on this one. This would actually be not bad for some the uh, the other one, uh, but let's go. So let's go with lead. Don't worry, another. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna. That's not that song. That was totally something original and not even. Hayden, you like this one? This thing's pretty crazy. This is the yeah from Joey Surge's Tones and Tone Forge. This is the Misha Mansoor. This thing is nuts. Let's turn that down real quick. Very quick overview of this plugin. Three different channels. Cleans. Again, terribly out of tune guitar. Maybe not as out of tune as I think. Here's our clean, slightly different tone, uh, and th this is this is like one of the things is this wheel in the center. You can keep turning it, and each different one is a different amp and how much you're pushing into it. And then look at this number down here. Is if we keep advancing, it's a new amp and a different stack of tones. So if I just play lightly. Um, Pablo, I very briefly saw your comment. Um, I'm sorry you feel that way. I have worked with a number of individuals who are non-binary. They're part of the LGB LGBT A uh, plus. I I'm just going to say the LGBT community. They're all fantastic people and they're the nicest. Um, there is, unfortunately, terrible people out there, and I hope that um, you can look past them because what one person's, one person's view, it's easy for me to say, but one person's view shouldn't stop you from creating. And if anything, you can use it to help you create more. You know, that that's kind of where I want to leave it. I, I It's... And there's also plenty of people in the industry who are part of the LGBT community. Um, and I, I will say this, everyone that I've ever worked with, they've just been fantastic. I like how this has a little crunch into it, too. So, I might... I might dump that other one. No, I'm going to leave it, because here's one...
This is a little cleaner, I would say. It's got some fuzz to it. This has a little bit more grit to it. So two really cool things. Um, I can take these guys and just replace this one with all of those. Gives me lots of options. And then on this last one, I am gonna put another one of Misha's. Uh, this way I can go with something heavier. And that's what I want. Not all of them. Keep doing that. Let's just random. Yeah. If you want something crazy heavy, I can work with that. And again, this is just to get us started. If you have an idea, you can easily just pop in and go, oh, something heavy. Let me get that idea out there. Uh, catching up with you guys. Can I ask a small but random question? Hayden, of course, I'm just not gonna answer it. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead, man. <clears throat> Uh, I see the top right of your window show MPK Mini. Yes, that is this guy, which is not currently plugged in. Um, also, quiet you. Uh, for some reason, mine always shows Elisis Nitro, regardless of playing drums, or guitar, or what. Um, yes, so what that is, and I'll open this up here. Um, so you're talking, yeah, this guy right here. I can show you what that means. What that means. <sighs> okay. Um, what that means, uh, I actually need to grab this and find its cable, which is, oh my goodness. I think one stream is just gonna be cleanup day with Tim. <laughs> my studio's a wreck. Um, the MPK Mini, I think we did this last week, but I'm just gonna show you again, cause who cares? It's fun. Sorry for all the zooming in and outs. Um, so the MPK Mini is plugged in now. The, it's the highlighted device. And I'm realizing now that you can't see it. Let me just bring it down a little. Yeah, if I do it like that. Um, so the MPK Mini, or in your case, your Alesis, is um, it's your highlighted MIDI device. Um, <clears throat> focus device is what it's called. So with this, you can hit the little wrench and you get the little pop down. And now it's saying, well, K6 or knob six on the MPK mini was the last thing that I touched that sent MIDI information into Studio One, although it didn't go anywhere. So knob six might be my lead gain, but really, and that, that is what I want. So this is lead gain right here. You see, I click mode, it's the mode. If I click this and make a change. So it's this is tracking the last thing I touched. And this is saying that knob six is ready to get assigned. So I'm gonna go back to lead and I have K6, which I know which one it is. It's that one. If I hit this little arrow, it has now linked it to this control. And now on my controller, You can see this value is changing and it's still set back to mode. So let's just unlink that. Crunch gain. So we'll say that it, I want it to be on crunch gain. So now on the controller, I can go here. Here's a downside though. Like I was saying with this plugin, it has different um, stages, which you can see visually see down here. I can only go from zero to 100 on the control here. Um, so I can't go to the next stage because it's not like a continuous rotary where you can just keep going up and up and up and up and up and up. But um, if I instead wanted to link it to maybe like my EQs, I wanted to do my low and I wanted that to be K5. Well, I can just do a little bit of thing. Crunch bass. Now, there we go. I have a, a MIDI control for my EQ here. Now I want to control the mids. I want that to be K6. Link that. And then I want to do this one, and I want that to be K7. 
So now I have tactile control of my EQ with my MIDI controller. I hope that helps. Uh, so the, this being yellow says it's the focus device. If I turn this off, you're not going to see it change, but if I mess with the controls, you're seeing the EQ on the amp jump around. So there you go. That's what that does. You And then I'm just like undoing real quick because I don't want this in my preset. Uh, it needs to be 50. Let me just zoom out. 50. I want everything right up the middle because it'll be easier. It'll be easier. It will. Hope that answers the question. Uh, okay, interesting, because I don't have a mixer like that. If I hit my Alesis, uh, thanks. What do you say? Do you, is, does your thing have controls like this? Let me make this big so you can see it better. Where it's got pads, or and mine has knobs, and it's got the little thing. It's got all these little, different little. Well, that's on. Um, it's got all those different little controls. So if yours has something like that, you can control different parameters. Um, even if it has like the little faders on it, you could do that. You can have a little fader uh, bank right on your MIDI controller. Uh, <clears throat> anything that can send MIDI CC can do it. Yeah, that actually, like we were talking on the uh, the meetup today. Is Ken still here? Ken, are you here? I think you were saying that you wanted to send MIDI CC to for like expression and stuff like that. Um, you could do that from like a fader port too. You can absolutely do that. Um, it, it's it's not as easy, but you certainly could. I've done it before. I'm just gonna change these to like a darker green. So, okay, let's go back to our templates. Why are you being, oh, it's all the plugins. It's all my amp sims. Uh, sorry guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, okay. But okay, that makes way more sense. Ken, you are here. Yeah, I think it was you, Ken, who was asking, you wanted to do orchestral things to be able to control like MIDI and, or duh, MIDI. You wanted to be able to control like expressions and things like that. Um, you can link those to faders on like a fader port eight or 16 or anything like that. Um, same kind of way, you make that the focus device and you find your parameter, you link them, and then you can ride your automation like that. You just have to do the assignment, and yes, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can. All right, let's 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 finish up this template making because we've been going for a bit. Um, acoustics. Why can you not hear a pigeon in an amphitheater? Anybody? You cannot hear a pigeon in an amphitheater because acoustics. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here next week. Be sure to tip your waitress. <laughs> Yeah, yep, 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 you just have to, yep, C7 and CC11, yep. <clears throat> Kamosh, we should talk as I'm working on expression, also for a casual shot. Yeah, you guys should con should uh, should connect. Um, let's see, do our thing. Uh, so I'm going to add a bus called Acoustics, that's that. Those things are all dropped in. For this, I'm going to do a very similar kind of thing. I'm going to set my pans. Um, and I'm not really going to, that guy's awake. It's because I'm moving my mouse over. Um, I'm not going to do too much, but one thing I am going to do is I'm going to throw this guy on the Billy Decker acoustics bus plugin on. Cause I already know this thing is like crazy good. Um, Billy Decker country mixer. Um, and he worked with the guys over at Joey Sturgis tones to make the bus glue series and this one really makes like acoustic things like obviously acoustic guitars like your banjos your uh what did he do like bazookies your mandolins things like that going through this it just sound really good he made it very easy to do stuff 
Um, so if anything, I would have four acoustics because they would just be like percussive things. So I'm going to add that in. Then let's add some more stuff. Um, vocals. There's going to be like my lead vocals. Make it red into there, into my mix bus. Same thing again. Make a bus for these. Uh, and I do know that on all of these, I do want to have some kind of 1176 on there. Um, I am going to go with, actually what I should go with, and what I should play around with some more, is the stuff from PA. But I guess that kind of shows you guys, or it's supposed to show you guys, like, this. let's go with the purple. This is kind of like an 1176. It's a new one that I need to, uh, not new, but it's something else that I want to mess around with. It has TMN, but you've seen it. Um, but it also has like low ratios, uh, side chain ends, so we can use our side chaining if we need to. I'm just going to go like that. I'm going to go like that because that's very standard for me, for a lot of people, but that's at 100%. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about that. That's going to be all the same. Yes, yes, and yes. So now all those are the same. Cool. Vocals, I guess what I really should be doing as well is really is loading in like a bunch of the plugins that I go to because that's what I want to do. Like, you know, when you're working with templates, you, you want it to sound the way you want it to sound kind of off the bat. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put some SSLs on here. I should put some like bus processing on these, but I think I'm just going to refine everything for like my writing sessions. But if I put like some compression on the vocals, really, I should probably do some stuff on the bass too. Um, I'll set up my mix bus in a minute as well <clears throat> and save all that into this template. Um, let's add some more stuff. I don't know why I did it that way. Let's do BG box. And this one we're going to make a bit bigger. I like orange. It's going to go to the mix bus. And we'll just go with 12 again. There we go. Make a bus. And then we just got to spread these guys out. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. Again, all of this stuff can be saved for later. That's the idea. It's a template. Um, and let's see, I mean, sometimes, uh, thanks for the tips. You're very welcome. Jim, you're leaving. Well, thanks for coming in and hanging out, man. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. the frequency of them. In the back. Just subscribe to the channel. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Big Red. Um, uh, but after that poor joke, I need to unsubscribe. Yeah, no, no, I know. I know. I'll see myself out. Uh, I'll... Good night. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I am just going to do it now. Um, I've heard good things about this. I don't, I really shouldn't put this on my mix bus because I haven't used it yet, but this is from Plugin Alliance. It's kind of like another, um, you know, SSL style bus compressor. Auto. Slow. Uh, four is probably pretty normal. Is it that, that, that? Um, I think I'm just going to leave it on and put it there. I'm going to use my my general one, which is the old Waves one. But I kind of want to, I think I want to start steering away from this one. It's great. It's old trusty. I already have like my settings in for it. Um, so I'm going to put him first. Get out of here. Uh -huh, uh, -huh, uh, -huh. um, uh Actually, let me see this one. Vocals. His. I forget his. Let me see this one real quick. Tone, aggro. This is. You know, I'm going to leave that on. This is a bus compressor. This is another one from JST, but this is the Joel Wanasek. This is vocals. So it's kind of like a limiter, but there's some other stuff going on as well. There's some saturation. There's some, like, parallel compression in it. Um, I'm going to put that in. Might even do the same thing. I just put the same one on here for now, just to have them on there. So you can see, um, <clears throat> Hayden, 
get those questions in, man. Everybody, get your questions in. I'll answer them as uh, you know as I look over and, and talk with you guys. Don't feel like you need to say like, hey, I've got a question. Let's just put them in there, man. If I can get to it, I'll get to it. Um, uh, I have a Roland FP90 digital piano, and I have it plugged into my Focusrite 18i8. Cool. But I noticed today its inputs seem way low. A uh, quarter inch. Okay. Like, very low. There's no gain on the inputs on the back of the interface. Quarter inch on your 18i8. Which inputs on your 18i8? And do you have those ones set as line inputs? Because the it should be line out of your piano into your interface um, if you're doing quarter inch. Uh, these ones can be like that. That can be like that. Um, I think... I think this pretty much has me covered. I am going to turn this thing on. All right, so while you're still putting all that stuff into there, let's get into the actual, we've made a template. We've taken so long to actually get into this, but you guys know I sidetrack because I talk to you guys and, and work with you. Um, file, save as template. This is really all you need to do. Songwriting. Coded 19, right? Description, TTA, song, basics. I don't care about icon and I'm not replacing an existing. If you make a template and you're like, oh, I don't want to use this amp sim anymore. I want to use that amp sim. Um, you can save your session, go back in, change your template and then replace your existing template. Because this one is totally new, just going to hit OK. And there you go. Now, when I open up my start page, I can say, like, I'm writing a song this week or this day or this hour. Let me get into here. And I know that I wanted to name my drum inserts. So what we can do is we've saved that as a template. And what, I'm, what I'm also going to do, um, so I'm just going to save the session. But let's go into here and very quickly, not that one, that one. I got rid of my drums. That's right. You saw me do it. I'm going to get rid of that track. I'm going to leave my drum bus open. But now let's drag in Steven Slate Drums 5 because maybe I want Slate Drums in a template because it has different sounds. So I'm still in the same session. Everything else is exactly the same. I'm just pulling in Steven Slade drums, putting it in. I slapped it onto the drum folder and outside of the beach ball that we're getting, here we go. We can just easily pull open anything. Let's just go with classic metal, metal black. And let this thing load up. And then the only thing, I, the only other thing I have to do, because it'll load every time the template loads, when we make new songs, um, the only thing I have to do is my routing at this point. I've done everything else, but now I just have to go into my different drum programs for the different sounds and do the programming there, or do the routing there, I should say. Mm, it's tough because I'm using Focusrite's control panel thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hang on, I'm catching up. Okay, first, when is the output volume set on the piano? Yes, if the, vol if the piano volume's down, that might be affecting things. That should be a line input. Yep, uh, four and five, I think. Uh, as a suggestion, you may want to start on your odd numbers. You may want to do like inputs five and six and whatever is currently in six. If you have anything, move that to four. If you have mono, if you have like multiple mono things, so. Uh, maybe you should have to line in. Correct. Hmm, that's tough because I'm using Focusrite's control panel thing. I don't have a Focusrite interface, so I can't pull it open right now. Um, so the, the one thing I do know is like for like my Apollo, I can open up the console real quick. Console. Um, so if we're looking at channel one up here, you can see that it's set to high Z. It's because I have my quarter inch cable plugged in. Some of these will do it automatically, but if I unplug this, eh, it's automatically switches over to mic, but I can also click this and now it's set for line input. 
This is the Apollo one. You guys, ooh, I'm noticing now, you probably can't see. Zooming way in. Line. I can click it. I'm going to plug in my quarter inch cable and it automatically switches to high Z. If I unplug the quarter inch, it goes to mic. But for a digital piano, you would kind of want that on line. If it's a stereo one, I would need to do it on both channels. But this is the one talking to you guys. And I'm not doing that right now because then it'd be very quiet. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, those inputs don't show on the focus right control app where I can adjust all the settings. It's kind of weird. That does seem weird. Maybe check to see if you need to update or if you have the right driver or anything. Templates I've seen being created with Studio One don't use as many additional tracks as you. Why are you adding the numbers you are for everything? Uh, for the background vocals, I'm assuming you like stacking. Yes, 100%. And that's kind of what I'm doing with, um, with my guitars. Yeah, you're going there. Okay, cool. Um, Honestly, I like that. That's a good starting point. Save as template. Song writing simple SSD. Uh, I'm not worried about that. And I'm not replacing the other one. So now I have two templates. They have the same guitar stuff and all that, but the drums are different in case I want a different sound. You can just kind of keep doing this. Um, so something like this for guitars. The reason that I've made templates with a bunch of different things for my guitars is I do different amps. Um, so like this one is going to be like a cleaner one. The medium one is going to be a little bit crunchier or dirtier. And then the last ones are going to be really heavy. And then I can always just duplicate these in the song. And the reason I make four tracks is I can have like a set of basic rhythms and then two additional tracks for octaves or anything like that. And it's going to be the same sound, but we can always change that later. This is a starting point when we're songwriting. We just got to get those ideas out fast and we can change things later. Um, you know, if I have an idea for something, I can just run in, plug in, arm any one of these, hit record and go. That's the idea that we're making this template for. Same thing with bass. If I have a, an idea for a bass, I have a straight up clean. It's absolutely nothing. I have just a clean amp, a grindier amp and a really heavy amp. So that's why I'm making all of these things. Same, same thing with the background vocals. I love big stacks of harmony vocals. Funny enough, I don't really like acapella stuff, such as me. <laughs> but the, it's it allows me flexibility. I'd rather have too many than to take than to take the time later to have to be like, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me make some more. If I take the time now with you guys, I can stack it up real big. And if there's nothing on it later, what do I have to do? Oh, all of these shouldn't have that plugin on it. I should just want that on the bus. Let me see if it did it to these. No, that was interesting. Um, if I'm writing a song and I'm like, oh, I want some cool vocals going on here, I can record four passes of, of different notes and performances real quick. And if I don't use these tracks, just delete them. I'm not losing anything. But the only thing I'm losing is the time now to be ready later. This way I don't have to make or duplicate all of these things over and over and over again. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Output volume on the piano. Is that just kind of the bug volume knob? Yes. I had it all the way up and all the way down and didn't make a difference. Um interesting. Classic never. Classic never. Do I keep doing that? I have two focus rates interview. Hit me up on Facebook. Yep, we will do it. Cool. Yeah, Hayden, uh, re reach out to Michael Johnson on the uh, the old Facebook. Great songwriters. Tim, I've got two different mastering projects I'm working on in Studio One. Is there a way to add a track from one project to another? In other words, how do I switch tracks between projects? Are you working in the projects page or are you working in the song page? Um, Beach Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about the beach ball. <laughs> Dude, we're gonna record Pet Sounds Volume 2. Oh, I got all those things, I use it on Pet Sounds. So the problem is I just can't get anybody down here. Anybody? Nobody? Nobody? No? Alright, that's for me. Um Okay, so we have two templates that we've made, one with Save and Slate Drums, one with um Corn F Audio. Um I think I also have Is it in here? 
I may have gotten rid of it. I had a... There's Spitfire. That's cool. Um, I have to remember my stuff. No, not... A, might get loud, because that's Anarchy. If you're looking for a drum, free drum set, they're Anarchy drums. I'm not going to use that, though, just because I don't need to right now. Um... I guess I got rid of... I thought I had the free version of GGD. Um, but it's gone. So, okay. No big deal. And uh, that's another one. The MT Power Kit is another free kit. Isotopes, it's those things. Okay, cool. Well, you know what? Yeah, SSD, we did that. Spitfire is like Symphony. Okay. Um, so, there. There's our template making think you guys get it, right? Does everybody get it? Everybody knows what's going on? You all followed along? Cool. Uh, you're in the projects page. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Let's just make a new project real. So let me, let me see if I can find just some things real quick. I'm going to go into my files. I'm going to pull up in a couple mixes. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Now you guys see my crazy schemes for this stuff. So I'm just going to grab Buddy's song. Which one did we just do? We just did Vibe. Um, there's some masters that are in there. Here's this. Mix downs. V6. Okay. So if I have this in here, um, we've got two different mastering projects. So let's make another new file, new project. Call this new project two. We'll load a different song into here. So I'm assuming this is what you're doing, so I'm just trying to set something up. Um, I know that this is a different mix. So here, now we have two different projects, right? You guys can see that. Two. Oh no, you can't because my face is in the way. Um, cam. Unlock. Whoop. Okay, so you guys can see it now. Two different projects, right? Okay. Back up we go. Whee! Guys, look, I'm flying. Um, is there a way to add a track from one project to another? In other words, how do I switch tracks between projects? Mm hmm. Every great information ideas. Yeah, you learn something new. Projects, okay. Um, great songwriter, I think I'm following along with you. So these look very similar because of the same song. So, you know, just look past that real quick. Um, you guys can see here, as a very visual way to see it, let's just change this guy's color to like red. And then you'll know that like I'm changing projects, right? Is it when you see things? Okay. So, I'm not sure this is what you're asking, but I've done. I've gone to song tab and song menu, scroll down, add the project, and click name that I have in project. Both songs are there. Yes, you got it. Okay. So if you have two things here, I'm gonna go back up to your original question. I'm working on Studio One. Is there a way to add a track from one project to another? Um, but imagine, so that's how you can like duplicate the track or change it's, oh, you can't do anything there. Um, without it being exported, I don't think so. Now, uh, great songwriters, I'm going to be honest that I don't do a lot of work in the project page. Um, generally speaking, I, I'm more so in the song page. Um, so if my only suggestion or my only thought right now would be like, if you're, if you're trying to use it as a reference, then just print one and then you can just like put it on your desktop or something and keep dragging it in and dropping it in and go from there. Um, if you're trying to do, here's a great one. If you're trying to make a template for it, you can do the same thing. Um, you can't save as template, but let's say on your master, you always do. Um, what, were the, what was that one we pulled up before? The townhouse, uh, the townhouse, 
right? Yeah, townhouse bus compressor. Maybe this is your go-to mastering compressor and you follow this up all the time. This is the analog sound in case anybody's wondering. Ooh. You always follow this up with like a mag four. Um, and then you always follow that up with, I gotta think of a limiter. Uh, let's just go with the old classic, the L1. Maybe this is your go-to mastering chain, right? If it's the stuff you use all the time, you can still come into here and the down arrow, store effects chain. Default master chain. And now you've made a default master bus chain. And now I can go over here to post, add, oops, you can pick it. Actually, not the not the plus. Excuse me. Down arrow. Mm, default master chain. And I've got the same thing here. I've got more noise because I've doubled everything up. But turn off post. Turn off that one. Noise goes away. Turn this one up. Turn that one up. Heck, let's go up here. Every song gets three levels of this. Why not? Two different mixes. I'm burning some CDs. And like the track in track project one... To be in the same project too. Bring some CDs at, and like the track. Project one. In the same. Now, I guess, great songwriters. The question is, why do you have two projects? Um, if it's for like individual CDs or something like that, I guess that makes sense. Um. It's a very unique situation that you're asking about, uh, great songwriters. Um, if you have one song from Project One, then if you're not... Okay. Okay. If you like Song One from Project One and you're burning CDs, you could just burn yourself... Burn yourself. You could just make a digital release that will put the... F the uh, <laughs> it will put your mastered file and create just a wave file of it. Then you take that wave file and put that into the other project. It's already completed. You've done the master of it. Um, you can even save the effect chain like we did here, and then put that effect chain on song. The the song in the other project. He wants a match EQ type thing. Two different mixes of a CD. Uh, I have to add the song into the project after you update the master and then add the project. And then... Take the one you like, look at its EQ, and try and match that. Um, yeah, if you're trying to EQ match, the, uh, there's nothing. Is there anything built into Studio One that does EQ matching? No. You can adjust your targets, though. Um, I gotta turn all this stuff off because all this noise is bugging me. <laughs> um, I got this. I never use effects chains. I probably should, but I never do. Yes, EQ is different. So. Okay, and going with that, if it's a reference song and you're trying to match EQ, hmm. I'm just going to think stock things that might be able to match your EQ. I mean, you'd have to do it manually. What you could do is I wonder, can I do Pro EQ on here? And you could still sidechain. Okay, ready for this? Mm, I don't know if this is going to work. Let me just grab something totally different. Did I do any of these? I didn't mix any of these. I just recorded those. Um, I'm trying to think of some kind of mix that I did. Let's just take this. So clearly you can see that these are two different things. Um, if I do pro EQ here, I do one there. So here you go. In pro EQ, you could sidechain your other track into your first track. Okay, let's turn that on. Now I'm curious. I'm also going to turn this down because mm, it's not playing. 
That's very interesting. If you're trying to do, <clears throat> excuse me, something like EQ matching, um, as far as I know right now, there's no uh, built-in one. Adapter metric AB from uh, Plugin Alliance. Uh, no, Isotope can do it, but not just in the box or an old program called Harbaugh. Yeah, there's no built-in like stock EQ match plug-in inside Studio One. You would need a third party. Let's get all these out of here. Um, right, right. I don't think so. Yeah, definitely not channel strip. Not the fat channel. Not the meter, or mix tool, or anything like that. Open air, mm-mm. Let's see by the dynamics, nope, 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 nope. Uh, red light distortion, no, 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 no. Tone generator, spectrometer, scope. Yeah, no. No, that's not something that's built into Studio One. So you're gonna need a third party thing where you can analyze, like, um, Ozone has it. Um, the the one that I have that has the the EQ matching built in is the old one, is Ozone Five, um, where I can go to EQ, go away right here, and I can go into matching here. Let me just turn it on so you can see it. So I can say like, oh, <clears throat> uh, I haven't done this in so long, but you can say like what you want your uh, your reference track to be, and then you can apply what that sound like, what that sound overall sound is to your original. So that's EQ matching. There's no, there is no stock one built into Studio One. Um, so I am sorry for that. We are not going to save this project. We're not going to save this project either. We were making templates, and I think we're in a really good spot. We have our drums. Where is he? Wake up. Wake up. That's not going to you guys. Why is that not going to you guys? You're going to there. You're going to there. That's why. Now, you guys. A little low going to you guys, but that, like I said, you know, if I'm doing mixes for you guys, I don't want you getting totally blown out. So I, I just dropped this thing down a little bit. <clears throat> Confusing for sure. Yeah, it's okay. But it, from, I thought I might be missing an easy way to do it. Well, there is with the with the ozones, the um, like the standard and the advanced. I think the standard has it. Um, what. But the consensus is, is that you're looking for EQ matching. So that's what you should be looking into. Um, they got sales still going on. You may want to upgrade to Ozone 9. Uh, <laughs> I have Ozone 9. It's in there. It's in there. Hang on. See? Ozone 9. But Ozone 9 elements is what I have. Because I generally mix if I just need something louder to send to a person. Um, this is more than enough. I could just go to the maximizer and put the limiter on, make it loud and loudening, and send it off and be like, here, this is a rough idea of what it is. If you need a master, let me know. If you need a mastering engineer who's not me, which I highly recommend, here's some people I know, and I trust their work. So elements is plenty for me. Um, and even still, like I can just use elements to get their limiter and do other stuff beforehand in the chain. I mean awesome tool even just doing master assistant as it is awesome tool not something i personally need in my workflow all the time pablo is here maybe ozone nine not cracked now if you know what i mean i don't i don't do cracks man i don't do cracks um yeah that i i'll be honest i used to long time ago when i first started my career Thankfully now I'm in a good position where the things I want I can buy. Um, I, I feel like you're not a pro unless that's how you did it. But when you're in the position, support the people that help you support yourself. All these plugins I pay for myself because 
it supports the people who made them, and in turn, that supports me. The better, the better I can do with them, the better I can deliver a product, and the more people like it, and maybe call me, and then I get more work. So it's a way of paying back to the people that take the time to make them. Uh, but, 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 but. Does anybody have any questions? We went for a while talking about templates, um, but I feel really good about this. Actually, I want to prove it to you guys. Let's go like this. Let's just save, uh, and then we'll close this. And we'll make a new song, and we'll call this Killer Tofu. <laughs> no, that was the that was the '90s cartoon, um, Clowns in Space. No, I, everything I do is in space. Um, uh, motionless. Okay, I don't know why I put the space in there. So now, quickly and easily, I can just find my spot, put things where I need them. Uh, beep, beep, beep. Once it loads, go over. Tim, that's me. You go in there. Big dumb idiot. Big dumb idiot. New song, user templates. They're already here. I forgot to actually click one. This is all you have to do is just click one. All of this stuff will change over. You still have to find your spot, which I have to do again because I am a silly person. I've, I'm have i gonna go with Steven Slade drums. No, we were just had Steven Slade drums. Let's go with Coded 19 instead. Still has my names, still has the spot. 48, 32, bars, beep, 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 boop, click. Off to the races. You can see it's loading my plugins the way I had them. It's loading my routing. It's loading my folders. It's loading my colors. Everything I need is coming right in. Then I can easily just grab something, not this one, because I don't have a microphone plugged in, although I could use that one, but I'm not going to. <clears throat> See, while this loads, you get your guitar, you make sure it's in tune. It's perfect. And then you get the beach ball because you want to be inspired. Summer, beach, you know, it's something frosty to drink. Don't mind if I do. Sunglasses, coconuts. Okay, it's all coming in. And there we go. See, that's all it takes. You just got to think about those things. Instantly come in, go to my guitars. I know it's this one. Why'd you not? What'd you guys do to my template? Did you break something? You break something? Oh. I saved that in the template. <laughs> That's gonna annoy me every time. And I know this is going to you guys because it's part of my routing and I can see it here. And instant. Thanks for the message. Might work. Yeah, cool. I'm glad you guys are working with each other, helping each other out. <clears throat> I've never used crack software. There's a lot of freeware you could have used. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that one was free. It was on nine. Um, oh, that was something I wanted to mess with, but I'm not going to do that right now. Well, I don't go stealing cars until I can afford one. You wouldn't steal a car. No, you might 3D print one. But yeah, here's your idea I'm in my template.
And very quickly, I can just come in, select any one of these channels, get a real rough idea of sounds that I'm going for. Yeah, one string probably is out of tune. Yeah, that template making in the most drawn out way we could have done that. <laughs> um, let's go with this and I'm gonna talk to you guys and catch up because I think we're probably gonna wrap up pretty, pretty soon. Wasted away again in Margaritaville, exactly. Uh, California girls intro here would be sweet, just saying. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> Big Red, what do you got? Do you know of a way to change the Studio One theme to something else? Or do you know where to get some templates? Well, we just made templates. Um, or we stuck with the blah default one. Um, like, the, like the color theme, are you asking Big Red? I maybe new string, sure, tuning. Oh yeah, I all my guitars need new strings. But you guys, with your Super Chat donations, basically paid for them tonight. And I'm gonna order them. Maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, let's go. Get... <laughs> exactly. That's, that's what I work with. That's, that's the stuff. Um, if you're talking aesthetics, you can always go here. Studio One. Open your preferences wherever it is. If you're on a Mac, it's going to meet the Studio One uh, option here. Or if you're on PC, it's underneath the view menu. You just go to your preferences. I forget exactly where it is on PC. Um, general appearance, and then I can change, you know, maybe I want a uh, you know, dark score or a light score. I can do colored plugins, and that gives you the little colored bar of the same kind of thing that you have going on. <laughs> and Hayden does another $10 super chat. Thank you. Um, but you can do, yeah, maybe you want light mode, almost like the classic um, the Classic Studio One. Classic Studio One was kind of, I guess it was way right on the edge here, but like, that's real bright. Ah, that hurts. This is, this is kind of Classic Studio One. It's like very light, very light gray. This was, uh, like Studio One version one, version two was kind of like this. Version three is where things started getting a little darker. Um, and that's actually better for me. It's like kind of like this cool bluish, uh, but I can turn like the, contrast up or down to adjust some things so it like helps the the words pop a little um shift the underlying tone of things so if you're talking just general aesthetics then yeah <clears throat> um you absolutely can um same thing with the uh the arrangement window you can see in the background here I'll just move it over so you can see it a little bit better. You know, I'm I'm changing all of that, and then I can make the grid lines a little bit nicer to see. So, do something like that, which actually I'm going to keep. I saw um, Gregor doing this the other day. Same thing with like the saturation is like those. How saturated do you want your your colors? Um, you know, like those underlying tones. Like, look at the menu bar up here. You can get it real blue because that's like their baseline. But if I shift around, oh, maybe I want everything to be kind of orange because you guys know me. Uh, I want you back to zero only because I like it the way it is. And I think that might do it. Hayden with the questions. That's all right. <laughs> um, oh, hang on, Hayden. I'm getting to you. Big Red, I'm new to you one, so I don't know what the older versions look like. But um, where you are now, thanks. Cool. Let's just apply and do that. Come back to you guys. Uh, yeah, but if you're talking like how you want it to visually look, 
that's that's how you do it. Uh, had to get rid of the Cali speakers. They were so loud. <laughs> Got Yamaha HS7s instead. Um, Hayden, question for you. When you had your Callies, did you calibrate them to an SPL level? Or did you just plug them in, crank them all the way up? Because you should be calibrating your speakers, one, so that they're the exact same volume because you don't want any discrepancies. Even though they're all all the way up, or it might be all the way up, um, they could be off by, I think these ones were off by a dB and a half. It's a big discrepancy. <clears throat> um, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but then you're going to be like, oh man, my, my mixes are always a little bit quiet to the right side because that one's quieter or that one's heavier or whatever it is. Um, so with your HS7s, calibrate them so they're the same SPL. You can just get, download an app on your phone, put it where your head would be, C-weighted, slow, generate pink noise, which is all frequencies, and find a target. Some people say 80 dB. Um, some people say 80 on the the, the, the scale. Uh, they'll say 80. Some people say 85. Some people say less. Um, depends on the size of your room. So I did. They were calibrated, but I had too much fizz. They had too much fuzz without... Mm, dirty power, maybe? Uh, so far, they felt... I have a studio on working with the new Apple stuff. I don't know, John. I don't have one of the new Apples, and I probably won't get one for a while. Um, I think, I think it's solid. Don't quote me. I don't know. <laughs> I can't, really can't answer it. I wish I could. Wish uh, if anybody has friends over at Apple and want to, I will so be friends. I'd be cool with that. Just saying. <laughs> Maybe we can try that with our one one That's a little complicated. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Um, Hayden's talking about. He went and signed up for a, a free lesson, and I can't... Can I edit the chat? Hang on, I'm going to see if I can type it out. Oh, no, all my things are being silly. Um, if you guys are curious, I do offer one-on-one -on -one lessons. There's a link down in the description below. You can click that. And you get a free 15-minute one-on-one with me where we kind of talk about what you're looking to do, how we do it together, um, and the, the game plan of how things work. There's no commitment ever. You guys can just, you know, hey, I want one. That's all I want. Cool. Now let's go for it. Hey, I want three a week. Okay. You know, if it works, you know, uh, I have a system set up. You guys can check out my schedule and find something that works for you. If anything, ask Hayden. He he knows. We did this. Music to motion. Mike Johnson wants, uh, he says he likes 85 better when he's calibrating his speakers. That's cool, man. Um, I think uh, mine might be, oh God, it's funny. I have to find out what mine are calibrated to because I have to recalibrate my NS10s. My son, I think I was telling you guys a couple weeks ago, my son came in and was fiddling with the controls. So they are way off. I just zeroed everything out. They're all the way down now. Um, I'm trying to like look up uh, Johnson. He has done some reviews on the M1 chip. I hear great things about the M1 chip, um, that it's extraordinarily really powerful and very well done. Um, it's just because it's so new and they have that crosstalk, I think they call it Rosetta thing for like some programs that were geared towards the Intel chips. Now it helps it translate to the M1s. That's a thing. Um, so it's still a really new technology and um, uh, lots of experimentation needs to happen so that if people know if it's stable and it will work for them. And unfortunately, I don't know. So I can't help. I'm sorry. All right. I think that's where we're going to call it tonight. Um, I hope you guys learned some stuff. It was a very drawn out way to show you how to do templates, but we were having fun like we do every week. I appreciate you guys coming out and hanging and interacting with each other. How many times did you guys help each other in the chat? That was awesome. Like, Michael Johnson uh, and Blade, not Blade, who was it? I'm going to come up a little. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, Big Red and Mike Johnson trying to help out uh, great songwriters. Everybody helping Hayden. Um, Blade's learning some stuff. Mike Johnson learning a few things. E earlier tonight, we were doing folders for VST drums and packing them in. So Kyle learned some stuff. We're all learning from each other. And that's the cool thing. 
And that's some of the stuff that we're going to be doing on the S1 meetup for the New York City Metro area. But it's not just New York City Metro. It's one with me. I'm going to host it. I'm going to hang out the entire time and talk with you guys. There's going to be some of the guys from PreSonus there as well. I don't know who. Once everything, uh, once the date, time, and who else is going to be hanging out is confirmed, you guys will see it all over the PreSonus page. You'll see it all over my stuff as well. I'm going to talk about it on shows like this. It's going to be fun. Sign up for it. Come hang out. We can talk with the guys over at PreSonus. We can be nerdy. We can be funny. We can, you know, whatever we want to do. We can have lots of fun. I know everyone here something. You know what you need? You know what you owe everyone here, Hayden? Is a link to one of your songs um, on any one of my posts in some comment or on anything that I've put out there. Um, YouTube's going to be kind of funny because you're not a mod. Um, but... I mean, you can put something in the chat here if you want, or just send it to everybody. Like, let us know what you're working on and what you're writing. All right. I think that'll be, you'll be a mentor before you know it, if you hang out with these great people. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, everyone here is here because of one of the other guys. Like, that's how we all work together. Um, and we all have connected through that. It's a cool community that we're building. And that's, again, it's what the meetups help drive home is the community of, you know, music makers and mixers, producers of uh, like talk shows and podcasts. And we all come together over Studio One and just being nerds. <clears throat> hey man, still awake. Blaze is here. Okay, good. <laughs> Long work week. Oh, yeah, believe me, me too. Uh, my work, ba well, I got a lot of work from home coming up, but I, yeah. Uh, we're never good here. Maybe I could be involved in Atlanta virtual meetup. Yeah, man, that'd be awesome. But Blades, if you can, come hang out in the New York one when you, once you see it pop up, because location doesn't matter. You can join any one of them. They're free. Why not? Uh, I think the link I clicked on in the description didn't work. What's the URL? for free lesson and does tim have a course as well tim doesn't have a course yet it's something i've thought about putting together for a while but it's a big thing to undertake um oh hang on i'm just checking something real quick uh, 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 uh. Ooh, let me see oh there it goes yeah hit bill me too that's why we're finishing thing up First finished song. I click the link in the description. You can go to. You can at least go here to uh, just my general website, simplefoam.com. Uh, once it goes through, is it going to go through? HTTP colon slash. I don't know. Oh, there it goes. I had to put the HTTP. So you can just go to there and I should have a, a button up on top that says lesson and you can book your lessons there. Um, it might also be, I really need to make this into a shortcut. That might be a more direct one. I can't really remember. Um, but yeah, you guys can click on that if you're looking for uh, intro lessons and how uh, rolling lessons work. Go ahead and book one for yourself. It's 15 minutes, it's free. And we get to talk one-on-one -on -one about what you need to do. And every single lesson is geared towards what you want to talk about that lesson. And it could be the same thing or it could be new things. Um, maybe you went and did a lesson with somebody else. And you're like, hey, this guy told me that, you know, a compressor doesn't listen to the low end if you do this. And I can be like, oh, yeah, he's right. Or, yeah, you know, he's totally wrong. Or <laughs> No, kidding. Um, we can just continuously learn and grow. All right. Are you guys tired? I'm tired. I'm going to go retire. How many times am I going to say tire? I think I got a couple more in me. All right. Well, bit.ly. <laughs> okay, that last link worked. Big Red. Okay, cool. I'm going to have to. Yeah, I could use. I Actually, I do have bit.ly. Um, so, but uh, I, I'm talking. There's ways to do keyboard shortcuts, so I only have to type like three things, and it just auto-populates for me. I had that on my phone, which is the greatest thing. All right. Thank you, everybody. I hope you had a great evening. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Thank you again for all the super chats that you guys gave tonight. I appreciate all of you coming and hanging out. Make your templates so that it's easy for you to get into your studio and write your songs. It's really going to make things a lot easier. 
Uh, this is with no input. So if anyone has a chance, yeah. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great weekend. You're like me. You have to be. Want to relax? Yes. All right, everybody. Good night. Thank you so much, and I will see you next week.